he waited with all the other animals and dolls for somebody to come along and take him home. The store is always filled with shoppers buying Mommy all sorts right. of things, but no one ever seemed to want a small bear in green overalls. Then one morning, a little girl stopped and looked straight into Corduroy's bright eyes. Oh, Mommy, she said, look, that's the very bear I've always wanted. Not today, dear, her mother sighed. I've spent too much already. Besides, he doesn't look new. He lost his button to one of his shoulder straps. Corduroy watched him sadly as he walked away. I didn't know I lost a button, he said to myself. Tonight I'll go and see if I can find it. Late that evening when all the shoppers had gone and the doors were shut and locked, Corduroy climbed carefully down from his shelf and began searching everywhere on the floor for his lost button. Suddenly he felt the floor moving under him. Quite by accident he had stopped stepped onto an escalator, and up he went. Could this be a mountain, he wondered? I think I've always wanted to climb a mountain. He stepped off the escalator as he reached the next floor, and there, before his eyes, was a most amazing sight. Tables and chairs and lamps and sofas and rows and rows of bed. This must be a palace, Corduroy gasped. I guess I've always wanted to live in a palace. He wandered around admiring the furniture. This must be a bed, he said. I've always wanted to sleep in a bed. And up he crawled into a large, thick mattress. And all of a sudden he saw something small and round. Why, here's my button, he cried. And he prepared to pick it up. But like all the other buttons in the mattress, it was tied down tight. He yanked and pulled with both paws until, pop, off came the button and off the mattress, corduroy toppled, bang, onto a tall floor lamp, over it fell with a crash. Corduroy didn't know it, but there was someone else awake in the store, the night watchman, who was going his rounds on the floor above. When he heard the crash, he came dashing down the escalator. Now who in the world did that, he exclaimed. Somebody must be hiding around here. He flashed his light under and over the sofas and beds until he came to the biggest bed of all, and there he saw two fuzzy brown ears sticking up from under the cover. Hello, he said. How did you get upstairs? The watchman tucked Corduroy under his arm and carried him down the escalator and set him on the shelf in the toy department with the other animals and dolls. Corduroy was just waking up when the first customers come into the store in the morning, and there looking at him with a wide, warm smile was the same little girl he'd seen the day before. I'm Lisa, she said, and you're going to be my very own bear. Last night, I counted what I saved in my piggy bank, and my mother said I could bring you home. Should I put him in a box for you, the sales lady asked. Oh, no, thank you, Lisa answered, and she carried Corduroy home in her arms. She ran all the way up the four flights of stairs into her family's apartment and straight into her own room. Corduroy blinked. There was a chair and a chest of drawers, and alongside... A girl-sized bed stood a little bed just the right size for him. The room was small, nothing like the enormous palace in the department store. This must be home, he said. I know, I've always wanted a home. Lisa sat down with corduroy on her lap and began to sew a button on his overalls. I like you the way you are, she said. But you'll be more comfortable with your shoulder strap fastened. You must be a friend, sweet Corduroy. I've always wanted a friend. Me too, said Lisa, and gave him a big hug. Where's my kiss for that story? Somebody's...